Hey, what's up coaches? Welcome back to the channel. Today we feature James Bistera. James is the founder of Bistera Soccer Training. They have an amazing company. They specialize in private and group training and they run a bunch of camps and clinics throughout the year. Right now they're currently serving up to 600 active clients. You can learn so much in this interview. I hope you enjoy it. Like the video and make sure you subscribe to our channel so you can get more interviews like this that we post throughout the month. Coaching journey started when I was 17 years old. Um, I was involved with Paul Vale's Academy and part of the, the, the apprenticeship there was to complete your coaching badges. So I did the level two uh, that you had to do. Um, and fortunately for me, it seemed unfortunate at the time I got held back a year um, to kind of grow and develop as a player. Um, but within that extra year, it allowed me to do my UA for B. So I completed my UA for B at 19. Um, just through the recommendation of the, the course instructor at the time, it was Jamie Robinson, who is, who is working with the FA right now. But I just found an interest from that, completed the UA for B course when I was 19, and then I moved to the States, played soccer and continued my education and also coached within a local club here. So that's been the, the coaching journey and how I started in that. So Perfect. So you're obviously originally uh, from, from the UK and you've coached in the UK and you've coached in the US. So what are the, the differences or are there similarities between the two? Um, it's a long time ago since I've coached in the UK, although I did. Uh, collaborate with Tom Owens UK, who's based in Liverpool, does something similar to us at Bistera. Um, just the, in terms of the players, the, I know it's a big word to throw around, but the culture of eat, sleep, breathe the game, you know, back home. Here, um, they don't watch as much games. They don't really, the, the, the soccer IQ isn't on the same level as, as the players back home. In terms of the, the athleticism and the willingness to work is on the same, but taking an interest away from playing and, and developing yourself through watching the game and, and the tactical part is something that's a big difference. Perfect, perfect. So t tell us a bit about your, your business then. What does your company specialise in? So our company specialises in the one-on-ones. Uh, we, we basically want to be supplemental trainers. So the one-on-ones, the small group sessions, we also do camps and clinics, and we've recently just brought out a feature where we do um, team sessions. So we go into local clubs in the area, provide training for the team. Um, with over here, there's a lot of a lot of grassroots football where um, the parents are volunteers and they coach. So they get to take the teams on a match day, but we kind of take them for training and we, we work alongside the club with the curriculum and the, and the parent volunteers to, to make sure that they're, they're getting the right education through, through playing. Perfect. Love that. So you, you've obviously been coaching for a long time now. So what, what would you say is a perfect coaching session then? A perfect coaching session? Um, plenty of mistakes from both the player and coach because I always feel as though it's something that you need to reflect on. It's, it's a journey within the, within the session itself. Um, so plenty of mistakes because they're going to happen. Um, understanding the mistakes, why they happened and how to reflect on them and put them right in the next session is, is really, really important. Um, and just making sure you step off the field knowing that you couldn't really give given anything more the player has got a smile on the face. When you check for understanding at the end of the session, they can give you some information where you walk away and you're thinking, okay, they, they've taken something on board then. Then the challenge is in the next session, when you ask them the same questions at, at the end of the session, at the start of the next session, can they, can they give you the information that, that they said towards the end of the previous session? So I think, I think that's a perfect coaching session. Love that. Love that. So what, what do you look for when you bring on a new client then into your business? What are the characteristics they have to have or the personality traits you're looking for? Attitude, number one, is willingness to work, a willingness to learn. Um, we've, we've worked with 
plenty of players who are really good uh, from a technical standpoint. If you give them little pieces of information, uh, the ability to retain that information and put it into their their training or their games and apply that may may fall short just because of um, a lack of attitude or a belief that they already know. So I feel as though no matter the player, no matter the ability, um, if they go in with an attitude of a growth mindset and willingness to work and willingness to learn, that's going to help them. Mm. It's going to help us as coaches. Mm. I'm a coach that um, feeds off the energy of the player too. Um, So if a player is really energetic and and you can see their eyes are locked in and, and they're they want to learn and you can see that, then I'll give everything that I've got in that session. Love that, love that. So let, let me take you back to when you first started your, your business then. Yes. What what has been your, your biggest obstacle since starting? The the obvious one is a visa. So obviously with, with me being from the UK, it's um, I came over here on a, on a scholarship to play soccer. Uh, but from that point to the point that I'm at now, there's, there's been a lot of obstacles with the visa situation. So I completed a master's degree, which forced me to move down south to Alabama for three years, um, which was a great experience too. Mm-hmm. Um, and then just applying for the different visas is a daunting process. Um, but luckily I've been approved and, and continue to be approved on those visas. So visa is the main one for me personally. The second one, and I feel as though this is for a lot of the, the supplemental trainers, are the facility space, the, the, the access of fields. So, you know, when we first started out, we were hopping fences and, you know, waiting, waiting to get kicked off, basically, which affects your coaching session. Because if, if in the back of your mind you're thinking, is anyone coming over here to kick us off? You can't give your entire attention to, to the player that you're working with. So... Um, luckily we've, we've developed a partnership with, with the local facility here um, and we operate at off peak hours which allows us to, to kind of get the sessions in Perfect, perfect So do, do you run the business by yourself or do you have a business partner? I've got two other business partners so I started the business initially and then um, my friend who I played in college with, he came on board um, and, and that's where we, we created the name Bistera. Mm. And then another one of our friends who we played in college with came on board two years after that. So there's three of us that, that own the business. Excellent, excellent. And what, what is it like having three business owners? What, what do you need in order for the business to be successful? It's a good question. And I feel as though we're very unique in terms of our skill sets and... Um, each pieces of the jigsaw kind of fit together really nicely. So I love the the individual and the small group sessions and I love the marketing aspect. Yeah. Uh, my other business partner, Mike, he loves camps. He absolutely loves camps. So he got his, his uh, master's degree in, in uh, education. Um, so he was a PE teacher too. So he loves that part of the business. And Matt, the other guy is loves the the numbers the finances the hr stuff um so all three of those combined kind of take care of those those pieces of the jigsaw Mm -hmm. Uh, and the other thing that i think glues us together is the amount of trust that we've got in each other Mm -hmm. um obviously we were friends before the business so um we we really value our friendship more than more than the business really We're, we're friends first and the business comes second but Fortunately, with our skill sets, it all comes in, it ties together. And, and we honestly haven't had an argument yet within seven years of being in operation. So fingers crossed that stays like that. But Perfect. That, that goes on to my next question. And how, how do you build that, that friend uh, business relationship then? How, how, how does that come about um, when, may, when you have to make really big decisions within yeah. a company? I think uh, every voice is, is welcome, not just from us three, but the other staff members that we've got too. Um, so the, the, the hierarchy of the business, obviously you've got the three owners, but we like to operate you know, on, a, on a level playing field with everyone. So 
Um, in, our, in our meetings, we'll ask if there's any issues, any concerns, or any projects that we've got going ahead. We'll ask for, for contributions from, from the other team members too, um, and any insights that they may have, because I feel as though at times, maybe us three as owners, you know, our, our eyes are too close to the ground, and we need that outside perspective, um, just giving us that, that other perspective, as, as I've just said. So, um, yeah, it's, it's easy when, like I said, easy when you're friends, because if, if we weren't friends, if we were just business partners, I feel as though being able to say something that you don't agree with will be a little bit more difficult. When you're friends, if, if you don't agree with something, there's not as much of a repercussion from from the person who, who you're giving feedback to. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So. Okay, love that, love that. So so where, where do you see private training going? You're based in the US, so in the US in the next two to five years from now? I think the, the fact that they've just qualified for the World Cup, the US, is enormous. Mm. The, the women's game over here is enormous. Um, so I feel as though that's just going to continue to grow the sport. I think the fact that they're hosting it as part of North America in uh, 2026 is going to be enormous for the sport too. So I feel as though in terms of the, the growth in the sport is going to come from that. But I feel the, the switch to the individual and the supplemental training is, is going to be so, so important because if you look at the big clubs now, especially over here, they're hiring out supplemental trainers within the club because at the end of the day, the clubs are a business. They want to bring players through as homegrown players and then sell them on to the big European clubs. So the focus on the individual within the team, I think that's only going to keep growing. So being able to, to have a methodology of, of taking one-to-ones in the small groups within the club setting is, is going to be massive for our field of work anyway. That's good. Excellent. So what, what would you say to another American coach that that is either watching this or listening to to this interview yeah. and they want to start a business but maybe they're hesitant or they're scared to what would be the number one advice you would give them um it's all about context so um i don't want to just give a general answer i think it just apl it applies to everyone's unique circumstance for me if I was starting the business now at 31 years old versus when I started at 24, it'd be different advice because at 24, I didn't have any responsibilities per se. Mm -hmm. So me being able to work seven, seven hours in a row and staying on the field for six days a week, seven days a week was fine. I didn't mind putting the grind in, but now for me to do that, I probably wouldn't have a relationship. So I, I think it, 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 you have to look at, you know, what are your responsibilities that you have to take care of, that you need to take care of? And are you really passionate about this? Because it may look um, fantastic on social media and all this stuff, how it's portrayed, but really it's a word of mouth business. So if you're not willing to be passionate and put the work in and be authentic with, with your approaches, and how you interact with your clients, their parents, so on and so forth, then you may want to reconsider because it is a grind. So mm -hmm. th th those are the biggest advice I'd give. Love that, love that. So now that you brought up social media, mm -hmm. uh, something I know a lot of coaches are very good at is they're good at building a brand, but they yes. aren't good at building a business. Yes. So how do you build that business and the brand at the same time? I feel as though the brand, the brand and the business go hand in hand. Um, you know, if, if you're first starting out, and I, I think Joe Dixon spoke about this. I saw him when he was speaking to you, and I think he mentioned about the brand a lot. Um, if you tie your name into the business, people expect you to be there the whole time, really. Mm. If you have a name that... Anyone can come in and, and you, you build the, the brand under the name of quality 
then you can start to bring in more people. And then you as, as a business owner can work on the business, not in the business. Mm-hmm. Um, so branding is so important. You want, you want people to, when they hear your business or when they see the logo, you want those to be associated with positive things. So just how you, how you um, express yourself on social media is, is important. But that is obviously, it should be a reflection of, of what your sessions are in person too. Because the last thing that you want is building this thing on social media where everyone thinks this, they come to work with you in person and it's like a completely different person like what's happening here. So I, I feel as though just being true to yourself and your methods is, is really important in terms of building the brand and the business. Perfect, perfect. So how important is networking as a business huge. owner? Huge. And I, I think, especially for us in the supplemental training sector, because it's so new, mm-hmm. um, I feel as though we often get looked down on as if we're just throwing out cones, uh, making players dribble around cones and then picking up cash at the end of the session. Like yeah. we're a fully operational business. So, yeah. I, and don't get me wrong for me, when, when I was first starting out, I didn't really class it as a business until yeah. probably six months into going full time. Like I, I, I was living off my savings for the first six months. And I was just like, it's a passion and I love doing it. I wasn't really focused on the business aspect. So that's when Matt came in um, and really said, you know, we need to work on strategy. The, we need to get in systems and processes. What are we going to do with this? And I'm thinking, oh, that's, I was reluctant to like class it as a business. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, in, in terms of the, the networking, if you if you put yourself out there as again someone who's authentic, someone who's humble, and someone who's good at their work, mm-hmm. I think things naturally happen. So, our social media was big in terms of securing the the Nike Sports Camp contract for our camps. Um, we've been able to work with Jonah Football, who's huge in the um, the football training space. Tom mm-hmm. in the UK skills, different equipment and manufacturers um, for equipment have, have come through the networking. of, And it's not always direct networking. It's off someone else. Oh, I know this person who may put you into contact with this person in it. It's yeah. uh, The more you look at it, it's a small network. Mm-hmm. Uh, so if, if you can be that good person, an authentic person, that's going to help you to, to create more opportunity. Yeah, 100% agree. So let me take you back to when you when you first started. How did you did you get your first client, and how many are you currently working with right now? So initially, uh, first starting out, I was coaching a club in the area, mm-hmm. and um, I I was just dissatisfied walking away from the session with thinking that certain players haven't gotten anything out of that there. Mm-hmm. I, I, really feel as though I was maximizing their development within the session. Um, so I, I talked to a parent about that and, and they said, you know, do you want to, you want to take my kid for, for a private session if you, if, if you want to try and work on a shooting or something like that. So that's how it started out. Um, and then it grew through word of mouth in terms of active clients. So we, we classify active clients as um, working with us within the past year. Mm-hmm. to five between 550 and 600 clients that do individuals and small groups um, and our camp numbers last year were over a thousand players so um, wow. it's, it's definitely grown um, over the over the seven years that we've been in business perfect uh, well congratulations for that growth I'm always excited for coaches that are are succeeding in this kind of industry because I know how tough it is. Yes, so, especially with the global pandemic happening as well. You were like, for a yeah. moment, you know, yeah. I, I, was, I was concerned about all the other supplemental trainers thinking, you know, how, how, how are people going to survive after this? You know, if, mm-hmm. if they're living off this as, as, as their income um, and, and they can't do sessions because the facilities are closed, you can't come into close contact with anyone, how are people going to 
survive after this. But fortunately, from what I've seen on social media and the network that we that we've got, everyone seems to have come out okay. Yeah, perfect. So, what is what is your current sales process then? How do you guys sell and market your business? Word of mouth mm. is the biggest one. Uh, we're in kind of a niche market here in Albany because the closest professional club is three hours away, which is a positive in that there's no professional academies in the area. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's a positive, but the negative, and this is what I'm talking about with the culture aspect at the start of the conversation, is that for our players to, to go and watch a live professional game, they have to travel three hours away. So that's, yeah. that's the negative part of living in here. Um, mm -hmm. But the sales process is, is all word of mouth from, from the clients that we operate with in here. Mm -hmm. um, we probably get two to three reach outs every day. Over the past month, it's been two to three reach outs each day. Um, and typically it comes from uh, an existing client that we've been working with for a number of weeks. The next session, they'll be like, do you mind if I bring a friend or two? And it'll kind of snowball. It'll be a snowball effect through that. Yeah. Uh, and then social media, as we spoke about, is, is also provided as opportunities to work with professional players. Um, so that's that's another big, a big vehicle for us. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So talk talk to talk to us a bit about your your onboarding process. Then say I'm a parent and I want to get training from from you guys. Do you yes. guys offer evaluation sessions? How do you onboard players into your program? So this is, we're, we're currently refining our curriculum. Um, with the amount of sessions that we've, we've done, I just feel as though we need to focus on the 20% of the drills and topics that are going to provide 80% of the value to the players. Mm -hmm. So for us, Working on a combination of ball skills, such as an L turn into a scissor, into a step over. Yeah, it may be building coordination and footwork patterns, but is it more beneficial for players to work on a drop step of the shoulder and then outside touch into the space and explosiveness through that? So we're, mm. we're like I said, we're currently through a, a refining a curriculum uh, because we're not... We're always striving to like be better, yeah. um, and and making sure that we've got our own methodology of, okay, once you've hit this, you've got to be going into this. Yeah. Uh, in terms of the parents, we want to provide them flexibility. So the pay to play model over here, um, it's it's quite expensive to play over here, mm -hmm. which I can't necessarily be a critic of the pay to play. Otherwise, I don't think I'd be in business. But. With the pay-to-play, parents are tied into the club um, for a year, whatever it is. For us, we want the flexibility. So we never want our sessions to replace team training. We never want our sessions to replace the games. So we want to be as flexible for the parents as possible. If they want to come to us once a month, fantastic. If they want to come to us three times a week, they have that option too. Um, okay. And... The biggest thing, I think, in terms of our ability to retain clients is being able to interact with the parents and speak to the parents and, and get them on board with our process and, and what we're trying to do. Mm -hmm. you know, I listen to different podcasts um, and James Smith podcast. He, he mentioned, you know, a, a driving instructor you have a driving instructor for a little bit and then you don't need them anymore because you can drive. That should be the same for us. Our goal, as, as weird as it sounds, our goal is for you to not come to us anymore because you know how to critique yourself in your own time. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if, if you keep having to come to us three times a week, it's kind of like, it's, it's not pointless, but it's like you could be doing this in your own time. Like come mm -hmm. to us every now and again to just get okay, I need to focus on this, this, and this, but it shouldn't be just coming to us as your outside training and then you're doing nothing in your own time. Yeah. So I think it's just being authentic with the parents and the players too about what, what 
our plan is for them. Yeah, perfect. So, so talk to us a bit about the journey then that your client has when they join when they join you. So, what's the ultimate result you guys are looking to achieve? I know you've mentioned it briefly. It's like not to get more help. Yes. But what's what's the what's the outcome you guys are looking for for that for that client? Um, for them to hit whatever goals they have. If that's to play in college at any level over here, great. Mm -hmm. And when when we speak to the client on an individual level, like coaching in a one on one, so much more different than a team session because you've got to engage in conversation for an hour with one person. <laughs> yeah. so it's like other skills have got to come out. So we're yeah, trying to build life true. skills within that session, not just for soccer, but life skills. Yeah. So by the by the end of their journey, it's kind of like, have you achieved your goal? Yes or no? Okay. Have you enjoyed your experience with us? And are you a good human being? Mm -hmm. Like that for us, when we were starting out, it was kind of like every player that we're going to train is going to go pro. Yeah. But it's not possible. It's not possible. So now it's, are they good people? Have we instilled some values with along with their parents and their environment that they're getting at home? Can we be a an aid in that sense? And also, can we adjust our coaching to their goals? For example, if one player says to us, I want to go professional, you're like, okay, our coaching points now and our demands of you are going to be to a professional. Yeah. If, if someone says to us, I just want to make friends on my local team, then our demands in our session are going to be very, very much different, different, you mm -hmm. know, what we're expecting of you and what, what, we're, what information we're giving you to. Mm -hmm. So I think it's just being able to, to cater to every individual's needs and mm -hmm. help them on their journey of soccer, of life, whatever it is, and just yeah. be a positive influence on them. Perfect. And how, how important is good communication with parents? Huge. The, big, the biggest, the biggest. We're club neutral over here, so we, we don't really get involved in the club politics over here, but the amount that we hear from parents talking about this club and this club, and we're just like, look, we're, we're, that's not us. We're not getting involved. We're just here to train. But the thing that keeps cropping up is a lack of communication. So I think just because at the end of the day, if, if you're looking at it from a business perspective, your clients aren't the players. Your clients are the parents. They're the ones that are paying the money. Mm -hmm. So you need, to, you need to be in constant communication with people who are paying the money. And yeah. what, are they, what are they getting out of, out of this transaction? Is it just a one-time transaction where they do the session and that's it? Or is it a continued transaction of emotions where how did you check in with them? How did they do this weekend? Oh, great. They, they did this that you worked on the previous session. Mm -hmm. how, how did they feel the session went today? So it's mm -hmm. just that continuous communication to let the parents know that you do actually genuinely care about the kid and their development. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that. So something we work with coaches in our program on is adding value away from the field. Mm -hmm. So what, what are a couple of things that you guys do to add more value to your to your program away from the training session? Um, we provide, so feedback is important in our camps and clinics, we give evaluations just so that the player's got something that they can take away and be like, I need to work on this, this and this. For the parents, um, we, we speak about working on the business, not in the business. And this is something that I'm to this day really guilty about and it takes up so much of my time but i'm i'm still responsible for scheduling every session me yeah. personally we haven't gotten we're, we're going to move to it eventually but a scheduling system online will take off so many many hours of my time which is going to be great but i'm very reluctant to do so because of losing that personal touch so when i'm reaching out to parents to schedule the sessions or when they reach out to us again it's 
asking questions that are off the soccer field. So mm -hmm. how are they doing in school? Um, what can they be, what, how, have, they, have they been working on the things that we worked on in their own time? Have they been doing their homework, both soccer and schoolwork? Because we, we've said to parents before, if, if we've given them homework in our sessions, they go away and they don't do it, don't bring them to, ours, don't bring them to us again. Yeah. Because you're wasting, you're wasting your money. Like, they need to show that they're willing to put the, the time yeah. in away from us. Because grow, growing up, we, we didn't have personal... Imagine having a personal coach back in the day. Yeah. You know, what? <laughs> like, we, yeah. we didn't have it. We're okay. Like, we, we developed yeah. technique. We developed this, the, the football IQ. So you should be coming to us as it's a privilege. Absolutely. From so I, I think just Absolutely. making them understand that is, is, is really important. Perfect. Yeah, completely agree with you. That was definitely something I needed when I was younger. Yeah. Yeah, I would have loved to have had it, but yeah. I, I think my dad had been like, mm, how, how, really, how good are they, really? Yeah, yeah, like, exactly. Can, can you learn it in your own time? But, yeah. yeah, perfect. Excellent. So where, where do you see your, your business in the next five years from now? Um, so currently we're refining the curriculum, as I said. Um, I just want to have a unique methodology of player development for all ages and abilities and be able for us to digitize that and give that out to many, many more people. So instead of just in-person sessions here in Albany, it's like, okay, if you live in wherever, whatever country, it's like you can still have access to our methodology and our coaching points. Um, so I think we're going to be making a big push on that in the next couple of years. Cool. But as, as Joe said, it, it, again, it's, it's the, you've got the five-year goal, but for us, it's, it's kind of like the daily goals of like, how can we be better? How can we improve each, each and each day? Uh, so being very reflective on our personal sessions, being very reflective on the players um, is, is something that's important too, because we're learning as much as the players are learning too. Yeah, Absolutely. Absolutely. And this, this industry changes every single day. Yes, absolutely. So, perfect. Yeah. Excellent. So one last question. This is a personal one. Yeah. What, does, what does failure mean to you? Um, if, you if you think about what I said about the mistakes aspect, what's a perfect session? Plenty of mistakes. Mm -hmm. um, I feel as though failure is bound to happen it's just how you react to that. So it's, it's all circumstances. It's like, if you mess up and you have an expectation of it going a certain way and you don't deal with it in the right way, it's going to negatively affect you. Yeah. If you have no expectations of something, failure can't happen because you've got no expectations. Mm -hmm. So... If you do have expectations and it doesn't work out right, you've failed, it's right, okay, it's happened. How can I make sure it doesn't happen again or what are the lessons learned from that? Mm -hmm. So I always think it's, it's just so important that nothing's perfect. Nothing's, mm -hmm. nothing's what it seems on social media. Nothing's what it seems, you know, everyone that's very bright and bubbly, you know, may be dealing with other things on the inside or I, I wake up some days and I'm like, oh, I've got to go and coach. Yeah. And then I think back and I'm like, hold on a minute. You've got to go and coach. Like, like <laughs> it's like, instead of turning got, I've got to go and coach into a, I get to, to go and coach today. Yeah. I yeah. think it's just that, that complete different mindset switch. Mm -hmm. um, that's, that's how you deal with the failure. Yeah, yeah, love that. What do you, what do you think? No, I completely agree. Um, and I like the point you made where, where you said, I've got to go and just change in your mindset. Because like one of my rules, my day-to-day -day rules, is to be grateful for what I'm doing. Yeah. Um, you know, one thing is sat here asking you questions. Yes. Um, you know, something that 
I don't know, other people don't get the opportunity to. But again, it's also a decision. Mm -hmm. You know, the decisions you make day to day reflect on where you go. Yes. Um, I think we're all at the same level, but the only difference between one person reaching the top and one person staying at the bottom is just decisions. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I mean, failure for me is it's a, it's learning. Um, but if I can avoid failure, then I'd, I'd avoid a lot of stress and anger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but I know it's impossible. So, yeah. and you have to go through it. Yes, you do. You do. Yeah. Perfect. All right, James. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure. Um, you've inspired me. Uh, and I know any coach watching or listening will be inspired by your story, by your, you know, by your journey as well. So what would be the best way if someone wants to get in contact with you to do so? Um, social media platforms uh, at Beastera Soccer Training or our yeah. website www.beastera-soccer-training.com. Um, if, if people want to find out a little bit more about what we're doing or if you want to send me a, a DM on Instagram, I'll, I'll try to reply within a day and um, try to be, keep on top of that. But um, no, I, I really appreciate you taking the time too um, mm -hmm. and asking insightful questions and, and hopefully it provided some value to, to someone out there who, who's watching. So I, again, I really appreciate it. Absolutely. All right. Well, we wish you all the best Thank and you. hope to connect again in the near future. Absolutely. Top man, Leo. Thank you, mate. No problem. Hey, coach. Do you want to make more money in your sports training business? Mm -hmm. First, make sure to hit that subscribe button on YouTube so you can stay updated with all the newest videos that we have. Second, I want you to text me at this number right here. That puts you in contact with me. I can jump on a quick Zoom call with you, learn more about your business, and show you how to scale your company. That's it. See you soon.